Howdy fellas, Celebration Peeps. In today's video, we're going to be doing a gaming mouse pad. Um, I know we've done mouse pads before, uh, actually multiple times, both big and small and regu regular size rather. Uh, but this time we're going to be doing an extra large one that's uh, like 30 inches by 11 inches. You may ask, why is this different than doing the regular, even extended mouse pads? Um, in this particular one, we're going to try to show you how how I usually do a multi-piece uh, sublimation press. It, it's probably one of the most advanced and most challenging things in sublimation, trying to do it with like a 15 by 15 press. And usually you're not going to get great results unless you're extra careful and are just really experienced at doing it. But I'm going to try it for the first time ever and we're going to see how we, we're going to see how we go out with it. Um, this is the first multi-piece project I've done since the, uh, since the graduation stall. And those are a lot easier because it's a, it's a narrow piece of fabric. And this is a, a larger piece of fabric, more similar to like an Oliver t-shirt. Uh, so every, so even a couple degrees makes a big difference. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive on into it. <laughs> All right guys, so after a comical failure, go ahead and put that up on the screen. And what happened was, uh, I forgot that my press is conveniently 15 inches and I printed like 16 inches wide. So I had to slide the mouse pad and paper over without it moving at all. And that's a terrible idea. Don't do that. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to divide it into thirds this time, which seems stupid, but it's going to be so much easier. So we're just going to roll with it. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and merge visible. This is exactly what we're doing right here. Go ahead and bam. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put this on 13 by 19 paper which is going to be like 12 and a half. Uh, we'll say, uh, we'll just say 18 and a half. 300 DPI. Go ahead and put that piece on there. We're going to go ahead and put uh, this 10 piece on here. Whatever's left in the... Uh, that's going to give us all three pieces, and we're going to go ahead and knock this out, because... I feel way more confident doing it this way. This is infinitely going to be easy. Grab our guideline. We're going to do it. And there. Put him in that side. I like to zoom in and make darn sure I'm getting right on the guideline. Yeah, that's that's better than I can cut it. So there you go. And here's our third piece, which is going to be significantly bigger. But the reason I cut it like this is because if it's if I mess it up again, then it'll it'll be around the name and it won't be as noticeable. Like if if it's a double line there, you're not going to notice as much as a double line in the name. Um, and then I'm not risking double pressing either logo. I'm not really double pressing anything when I do it like this. So this is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and reprint these and get these going. Uh, same print settings as before. We're going to do it on hemi tail sublimation paper, and we're going to do it 13 by 19 on high, mirrored and everything, just like we do anything else. So we'll go ahead and get these output and go ahead and get them pressed. All right, guys. Uh, here's an update on what I actually ended up doing. Um, I actually put the uh, put two of the pieces on, uh, on 11 by 17 paper because it was going to be a little bit easier to do. So I'm doing both of these smaller pieces on 11 by 17 because my 13 by 19 was jamming up for some reason. Uh, still working on that, but I'm going to go ahead and print these on 11 by 17. And then we're going to put that middle section on, on 13 by 19. All right, guys. Uh, first step is getting the paper loaded. We have it set up in the paper tray. We'll go ahead and push it on the end. There we go. And obviously we're going to tell it that we have Super B paper, A3 plus Super B, that's 13 by 19 presentation mat. And we'll go ahead and get it printed and uh, get that going. All 
right, guys. Uh, first things first, we got all of our pieces printed. We have these two, the other two, I've already trimmed this, unfortunately, I did that off camera. We got these two printed on eight and a half by 11 paper. And then you have this big one printed on a 13 by 19. So we'll go ahead and get that trimmed. We have that one trimmed, obviously. And we'll go ahead and trim top and bottom and all that. We'll just go ahead and trim it kind of close. I have to use a little more light over here. Let me adjust that light, fellas. There we go. There we go. That's actually a terrible cut, but it's okay. Now, on this bottom, we're just going to get as close as we can and try to trim parallel. There we go. Now, on this side, uh, it's actually this side that I need to cut very carefully. So, we'll go ahead and trim this side first. Now this is the side that really matters. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take extra time and get this one right. Come look extra close. This will be easier with a straight edge and a roller. But no, I gotta do it the hard way. That white part's kind of not irrelevant but it kind of is I finish up with a nice strong cut and there's that piece all right guys uh, while that's printing we're gonna go ahead and lint roll this just take the lint roller and get all the stray fibers off of him how does all this crap get should get us taken care of now once again good lighting is your friend here we'll go ahead and uh, give this guy a quick pre-press again we're doing 375 for about 70 make sure we're actually on the press mm, plenty of pressure and we have this extra rolled up under here for more stability and we're just gonna give it a quick 10 second pre-press might be part of the problem is how much pressure I'm putting out. Alright, so left side of the mouse pad. We'll go ahead and get that going. That's this piece. And what we're going to do, we're going to use blue tape this time. We're just buttoning it up there. Uh-oh, I don't have a top of this paper cut. Alright, let's retry that. It felt really weird. That's like way better. Way more better. Much better. We can manage that. What we're going to do... Now, I like blue tape better for this particular application. That's just me. Just one man's opinion. And as long as we don't get it too crooked, we should be fine. We should be just fine as long as we don't get it crooked. 
If you get it crooked, you're going to have a bad time. Okay. Oh, yeah, we're on there reasonably straight. Go ahead and knock this on out. Go ahead and tape them all down. We'll go ahead and get them pressed, guys. Okay. Cover it with butcher paper. Let's go ahead and press our very first piece. Pressing at 375 for about 70. Good, solid pressure. All right, guys. Coming up on 10 seconds, we're going to glove up. Uh, about time to replace those gloves. I had a tumbler melted for a little bit. About time to replace them. Uh, you can get these on Amazon. Very, very, very good gloves. Will save your hands more often than you think. All right, now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and just rip this paper. And we're expecting a nice, super clean transfer, which appears to be exactly what we have. That's actually beautiful. I love it. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to take this hot mouse pad and we're going to scoot them down as much as we can. Make sure we're still good. And we're going to try to line up this second piece, which is significantly larger. But as you can see, look at all that ink. We got so much ink out of that. That thing took so much ink. It's beautiful. Uh, we'll go ahead and pre-press this as well. Um, yeah, pre-press. Quick pre-press. For about 10 seconds. Nothing, nothing major. We can, I, I feel safe we're using this butcher paper. So we'll go ahead and give that a quick pre-press. Nice flat surface to deal with. Now here comes the tricky part, which luckily we have a decent amount of lighting. So what we can do is we can uh, line up our image the best possible way we can. And then we're going to try to tape that into place. We're going to move this and get a little bit more lighting so you can see what I'm doing exactly. A little bit more lighting even. And what we're doing, we're just trying to, uh, to kind of get this ooh, that's, that's hot as crap. That's so darn warm. That's unbelievably hot. That is hot. And we're just gonna tape him down. And that looks really close. That looks really close. So we're gonna go ahead and pull him. All right, there's our stopping point. So we know how we know we need to heat press about that much. So we're gonna go ahead and put a piece of tape down here also. And I think we're good to pre-press it, to go ahead and press this. Yep, that looks really close. That looks really close. If we can, hmm. We're cutting out really close, guys. Let's make sure. All right, we're going to go ahead and press this. Make sure we get all contact, everything we can get on it. Yeah, we're good. We're getting it. We're getting it. All right. I don't see any paper on this side. So I think we're okay. As long as the paper didn't shift, we should be just fine. All right, so let's see what we got. My biggest fear is that we didn't get it all pressed. That don't look bad at all. We have a seam where it double pressed, but that's not bad. That's totally, I think we can live with that. We can totally live with that. That's just me trying to line it up. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and we're gonna lint roll this because it looks kind of nasty. It may have picked up something off that table. So we're gonna lint roll the stew out of that because you don't want to press dirt into your clean creation. Now, this is the last press. So we're gonna try to line it up really good too. This is the way, right? Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna try to line him up as good as possible also. That looks like it's got it. All right. 
knew where my tape went. Could avoid burning my hands. Alright. Alright, gents. Ladies and gents, that's a little off. But I don't know that there's anything I can do about it. That top line's just a little bit off. I don't know if there's anything I can do about it. Yep. I don't know that there's anything I might be able to do about that. Not, not much I can do about it either. Which is frustrating. Yeah, I'd rather the bottom match up than the top. So here we go, last press. We're gonna go ahead and throw this on here. We're gonna go ahead and press it and get it all going. All right, 60 seconds, last press. All right, guys, coming on to one. Let's go ahead and glove up. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's see what we're working with. A little bit of gap. Kind of disappointing. But overall, that's not terrible. I tried to stick it where it wouldn't get a gap over here. I just, I don't know. Th this gap here killed us, that quarter inch. You can really see it come in over there. I'm not thrilled with the results, but it's not bad. We'll go ahead and let this pull off and we'll fill my final thoughts. All right, guys, uh, that wasn't really the result we were looking for. I mean, it, it, it's pretty good. Like from like a, if you look at it from even that distance, you can barely see the flaws in it. But as you get closer, you can clearly see you know, a couple, like two minor flaws where it's pieced together. Um, overall, either I need more practice at doing this. Uh, there's probably some better techniques than what I'm doing. This is just how I thought it would be. And it didn't turn out quite as easy or as good as what I thought it would be. But I mean, it's, it's still a usable product and it's pretty good. And I think he'll be excited to get it. Um, it's not perfect by no means. And I don't plan on doing these for, uh, to sell or anything. Not until I get bigger equipment. The, the, the solution here is to get bigger to get better equipment to start with and you won't have to you won't have to do multi-piece projects you can just do what you want print what you want and then uh and, and then you can just press the big press and that that fixes everything with this uh, whole piecing together stuff so I, I hope you found this video helpful um hopefully it gave you a little confidence uh you know i i, I hate to show mistakes but if you don't show mistakes you're not really are you even human at that point? I, I hate to just publish videos that are just perfect, where everything turns out perfect, and it's like everything you got does is perfect. Well, here's 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 evidence that it is not. Even on even on two different attempts. Let me show you my first attempt. Because this is what I did the first time. I wasn't going to show this because it's so crappy, but I printed 16 inch wide paper. I printed it uh, about 16 inches wide, and I was going to do it half and half. And what I did, since it's a 15 inch press, you got to move it and press the other inch. I'm like, oh, that's no problem. I can totally do that. Uh, no, it didn't really work like that. Everything's all blurry because I moved just a little bit. And when I double pressed it, it really, it got messy quick. So yeah, this project's not for the faint of heart. But, uh, but as always, guys, uh, feel free to like the video and subscribe for future content. And guys, I appreciate it. Um, and don't forget about the newsletter uh, that, that we run once a month. We get like coupons and updates, new products, new releases, all that good stuff. You can subscribe to that in the, uh, in the description below. There'll be a link for that newsletter. So guys, I appreciate it. Peace.